There's a way that if you guys want to own this, um, you can do it at the Sarah Baker Benefit Clinic. And that's in Oregon, March 4th and 5th. And there will be an auction there, so if you guys want to, there should be, I think there's an online portion or whatever where you can bid online mm -hmm. or you can see it in person as well. So, yep. here it is. What's up, everyone? We're here at my forge, and today I've got Troy Wood with me, and we've been practicing this weekend. And something we've wanted to try and do and show for people is just the basic elements of basic uh, shoemaking as far as like three quarter fullard and plain stamps what we want to do is well we did a podcast last night for the forging brains podcast and we covered just some basic steps as far as you know trying to get efficient at building like three-quarter fullard mm -hmm. or plain stamps and basically what we're going to end up doing is showcasing each step and just kind of the process in which we explained is uh if you're going to build 30 pairs of shoes or 30 fronts or 30 hinds so the first step you'll do is you'll just do a toe bend and then you'll be done with that and then step two then you uh, you'll do your heels on those toe bend shoes and then step three will be turning your outside branch fullering it punching it and then for number four you would be doing so for this instance we're gonna do one branch creased and then the other branch plain stamp just to show the difference between plain stamp and fullered and then step five will be um, toe clipping it. Yep. And if we were to do a hind, uh, you'd be quarter clip. But in, we're going to do fronts for this, so mm -hmm. it'd be pretty fun. I'll do some step. I'll do one step, and then Troy will do a step, and we'll just alternate. And then uh, we're going to kind of make like a keychain out of it. All the steps or yeah, something. Uh, Craig calls it is like a jailer's key. I think <laughs> with all the different steps. So yeah. Should be fun. Let's get into it. Let's do it. Yep. So I'm going to center punch it, and since we only have 11 and a half inches of steel, I'm going to do a strong 16th. Okay. And that's my outside, so I'm going to punch my lateral. I want to make sure you get a good strong mark to where when it's hot, you can see it in the fire. So basically, the outside is longer than the inside, correct? Yep. So you got. A sixteenth more of steel on the outside versus the inside. Sixteenth offset from the center. So what it takes away from the inside, it adds to the outside. So there's actually an eighth inch more steel on the lateral compared to the medial. Sweet. So when uh, bumping your steel, what are you trying to look for? I want an even heat. Um, you don't want pulling it out of the fire. You don't want like one toe quarter to be a whole lot hotter than the other. So like, right now I'm gonna be splitting hairs, but I've got more heat on my medial than I do my lateral. So I'll put it in the fire, push it a little deeper, where hopefully when it's ready to get forged on, it'll have a nice even heat. Yep. So. When you're bumping shoes, or bumping toes for shoes or with three quarter fuller it is, you pretty much want to get about half an inch into your toe there, so that way, when you crease it, it basically stretches about a quarter inch each side. So if you're measuring feet for a plain stamp, you, if you add for a bump, you need to add that into your measurement. I always like to switch sides because the material comes to the hammer. So if you stay on one side of the bump, you're going to get a bunch of bump in one toe quarter. So when you switch, like it, it disperses a little more evenly through the toe. Basically, uh, when the steel starts to bend, you want to straighten it out. So I, I would say I've got at least a half inch in there. So we started with 11 and a half. I, I put three quarters in it right there. So a little too much, a little too much, but we can get it out of there. It's better to have too much than not enough. Yes, sir. Nice overlapping blows. I'm thinking of the inner rim, the radius of the toe on the horse that we would be nailing it on.
what I do to one side, I do to the other. So seat that out a little bit. Then I'll seat out the foot surface. And I think that's a pretty decent generic toe bend. Now we're gonna mark for the fuller run. Yep. So we're gonna mark for fuller in on one side and then plank snap on the other. Which side is which? Oh, it's gonna be fuller the outside and then safe the inside? Yep. Or plank snap. So since I marked my fullering on the line, on my lateral, I'm gonna mark my plane stamp a little bit below the line on my medial. Because you can't put your nail hole right at the start of your fullering. You need to creep it back just a little bit. So I'm compensating for that. Good to know. So now we're gonna put a heel on. What I like to do is I like to take my tongs and grab at the opposite toenail, and then have the branch flat, and then come by start knocking that corner off, bringing it around like that and then now you got your branch still keep it flat knock the corner off and then bring your hammer around towards center and then now we'll flatten it and then repeat the same step clean it up take our hammer around go towards center Then now it's got a little bubble, so now we'll take and flatten it. So now I still got a little bit of like fish eyes like right there on the end. We'll just take our hammer and we'll continue to clean those up. It works best if you can do your heel and keep that branch flat on the anvil like that as you're hitting. So that way it doesn't distort your toe bend in any other way. So now we'll do the medial branch or the medial heel. And basically what we'll do is we'll put some safing on and then uh, put our heel on. So doing is just run this up just a little bit. And then we'll take and lean our hammer, put in some safing and repeat the same by the heel knock the outside edge off, flip it, keep the branch flat on the anvil, knock the edge off towards center, now we're flattening it. So now we just need to clean it up a little bit, we got a little bit of frog eyes there, so clean up our shaping with our hammer. Now we'll flatten it again. Basically just trying to put on a round heel. When you have a round heel on there, it's easier to fit versus if you have like uh, heel checks in there. So if it's round, when you go to fit it, it'll be easier to put on a foot because then after the fact, then you can just rasp in a check that's to make a commissure. commissure. Yep. yep. So that's that step. And then the next step is going to be we'll turn this outside branch and we'll fuller it and we'll punch it. Yep. I'm going to bend my lateral and mark my fuller in. So try to keep it pretty simple. Yeah. So you're just hitting out in front. Yep, and then I just drop my hand. And I'll come here and look at it, see what I need to do. You come out and down. And I don't use the horn as a fulcrum. Like if I hit there, I'd just put a kink there. So I find the spot on the horn and I bend it around. And the radius that it makes the shoe is the radius that it's touching the horn here. So. Like you're almost using that as a die? Yeah, definitely. Nice. So now as you're marking your fuller, and what are you looking for? I look at my inner rim here, and I keep that distance the same all the way down. And 
and it's a Lamar Weaver trick, but you don't want to fuller past the thickness of your toe here. So it's like a platform. You get this thickness and that thickness, and you don't want to go like all the way to the heel. Like it makes things look intentional when you have like the same proportions in your shoe. I like that. That's what a lot of good shoemaking is, is you're managing distortions and reestablishing lines. Makes sense. It's almost like you're fixing a train wreck as it goes along. You just Yep. <clears throat> so front half, I'm on the, on the leading, like closer to me side horn, so it's opening the shoe up. And on the bridge, so the widest point, I'm on. And after, I'm in front, bending. So I'm always enhancing, it comes out and then around. Now when you're starting to get your corner there for the fuller, how are you adjusting that and how are you hitting it? I, uh, you don't want your fuller in to like, look like it's creeping up out of the section. I see a lot of guys like, the fullering isn't following the bend of the shoe. So like, it was trying to like, go out of the rim, so I really had to pick up my fuller and turn in, and I almost like, push into that corner to like, keep it following, and you want it pointing at the center punch. And you're, the way you're hitting on your fuller is you're hitting that back corner, right? Yep, so yeah, if, if you're picking up on your fuller, you hit this diagonal here. And like, if I was trying to make this stop good, which we're gonna plane stamp that side, I would be hitting this diagonal. So it's pulling it back into it. I'm gonna reestablish my shape and make sure that I get my section flat. Because when you drive a fuller down, there's drag down from like, on this edge of it and this edge. So the section is not flat anymore. So I'm gonna gather it up. Brush it again. And like when you're flattening a shoe, what you do to one side, you do to the other. Just basic blacksmithing. So I'm not killing it. I'm just giving it like a nice, nice tap on the surface. I'm not trying to like thin it down. And I'll hit a little bit harder on this side. And all the while, you're kind of relieving some sole pressure as well, right? Yep. So there's that. And then marking my toenail, I'm not going to be all the way up at front. I'm going to come back a little bit to where I could get creased nail pullers in front of my nail if it's not, when I drive it, it's not where I want it in the foot then I come find the widest part of the foot about right there and then right in between the two then I like to go one in each just to you want to use your pritchel as a shearing tool not as like a punchel as they call it <laughs> And then uh, don't you look on the back side to see how coarse I am. So it should be just about center of stock. So those shiny marks right there basically are going to indicate your depth, like if you're all the way there. If you don't necessarily see those shiny round pieces, you're not all the way to depth. So now he's all the way to depth and punched deep enough. Yep. Create, creating that sharp edge. So same thing kind of as uh, Troy stated, we're going to come to the horn first. You just hit out in front of it. At the same time, I'm kind of rotating my tongue hand down. Now we'll come flatten it. And then this side here is going to be our plane stamp side. So I'm fairly happy with that. It's kind of a loose shape right now, but we're going to end up fixing that as we do our frog eyes. So now we'll kind of map out where our nail holes go. This side's always been the tough side for me. How do you decide where to put the heel nail? 
of kind of looking at the widest part of the foot in comparison to my outside there. So I'm just going to go slightly above it because this is the medial side. And then for our second nail, I'm just splitting the difference between the two. And then now we'll uh, come punch our toenail. <coughs> and I'm kind of angling my uh, punch just a little bit for some pitch. And I'm starting off with a drift so I can get to the bottom without distorting the metal too much. You can see it's pretty small at the moment, but then I'll come in with a head stamp afterwards and open it back up. Okay, so now we'll come back and flatten it. And since my shiny mark there where the punch is, it's not totally distinguishable yet, so I need to punch it just a little bit deeper. And then now we have like some frog eyes where the metal is distorted on the inside rim and the outer rim, so we're going to go to the horn and forge those back in. So just going to maintain having the shoe perpendicular to the horn and we're going to hit flat on. Now we've got rid of pretty much all the frog guys on the back side there. So now we'll flip it and then I'm going to start grab at my heel and I'm going to work from the heel nail up to the toe. Now we'll flatten it. We'll come back in with our drift. Okay. So now we'll pritchel, so we'll bottom it out. Bottom it out. Bottom it out. Now we'll flatten it. And then there we have it on the plane stamp. And the next step is going to be toe clipping. So we'll just toe clip the next shoe. Sweet. A lot of times I'll start right here and I'll seat my shoe out and kind of pull the material where I, I want it to be. Then I find my spot, I try to keep my elbow tight, and I focus on the center dot, not where, the, where I hit the last time. So I'll get it started, and I'll creep over the side more. Just aiming for the same spot over and over. Right about there. You're coming in behind the clip? Yep. And I'll switch over to my rounding hammer. So his body positioning is pretty key at this point. For sure. Using the side of his hammer to pull material out. And I don't want to make it thin. I would rather have a strong, smaller clip instead of a big, thin clip. So I've got the material. I can flatten that out and take my little marks out. Then I'll come to the horn and go through my clip one way. Rotate my shoe around, make sure it's flat there. And go through it the other way. So it's basic blacksmith stuff of what you do to one side, you do to the other. So I'll give it a brush up and you guys can Take a look at where I'm at. Nice, tight, tidy clip source. Doesn't impede too much into the rim this way. It hasn't drug away all the thickness in the toe.
And then like you said, there's still thickness in the clip, but it's not overly thick. Because essentially, if you're going through the time to make a handmade, you want to be able to reset it. For sure, yeah. And if you have a really thin clip, it's just going to wear out and you can't reset it. Mm -hmm. Be a bunch of work for nothing. So when you're hot rasping, what are the first things that you're starting to do and look for as far as what you're going to take off? Right now I'm just making parallel lines. So I started over here and I'm just coming around my toe and trying to make my arcs line up. Yep. Or if I put a center line down the foot, this radius matches this radius and then if I put like a center line down my toe, you want this radius to match that radius. So and then I've got like a little bit of frog eyes and just some inconsistencies that I'm trying to take out. Yeah, so you'll do like a half round file on the inner rim and uh, just kind of a flat file on the outside and then just use the half round to take out any rasp parts, right? Yep, for sure. Sweet. All right, there we have the old jailer set of basically all the basic elements of shoe making between the toe bend, the heels, uh, turning a lateral branch and fuller in that branch and then we plain stamp the medial branch and then the last step was toe clipping the shoe. So we yep. each uh, did a step and there's a way that if you guys want to own this, uh, Sarah Baker Benefit Clinic, that's in Oregon. March 4th and 5th and there will be an auction there so if you guys want to there should be I think there's an online portion or whatever where you can bid online or you can see it in person as well so yep. so thanks there for watching is.